Hi, so you've downloaded Schema and now what? Well, fire it up and read this very important message and then click it away. Now let's take a look at the interface. On the left side, you have the schematic view. Uh, this is your scene. This is where you place fixtures. And you do that by double clicking anywhere in the space. So let's put one right in the center. This is where you choose your outputs. For now, it's quite empty. This is because we haven't enabled any extra plugins, but let's go with virtual for now. Once you have a fixture in the scene, you can edit its behavior on the right side in the block stack editor. The stack is now empty, so let's add something. To unlock editing, you can hold the control key. You can toggle edit mode by pressing control E, then you don't have to hold it. Alternatively, you can also use the menu here to do the same. So let's get to it. The rectangle you see here is an add zone. It's where you can place new blocks. So let's press it. Let's start with something simple. Let's say we just want to output our favorite color. Now it's something that you need to create out of thin air. So let's go for the source category. And as we said, we want a color. So we continue with color. And now there's plenty of blocks that will give you some kind of color, but all we need is just plain old color. This block allows you to set the individual RGB channels or hue, saturation and value, if that's what you prefer. So let's say red. Now you can see here, the fixture is outputting red, but a static red is a bit boring. So let's spice it up a bit and add some flashing. So holding control again to enable edit mode, we can add a multiply operator. Flashing is again another color source of type flash. And there's a few timed is the most basic one. Now let's see what we can do with the flash. We can adjust the interval, making it faster or slower. We can adjust the decay, making it very smooth or very harsh. An attack gives us a nice ramp in and adjusting the randomness makes it either very precise to the time or all over the place. Now let's say randomness is something that we want to automate. All you have to do is just press this little button right here and that creates a driver. Now is maybe a good time to tell you how to move around. Holding the right mouse button, you can drag the view around. Using the scroll wheel, you can zoom out and in. If you've noticed, as you zoom out, you get less detail. The parameters go away and you get a very clean overview of your stack. Zooming back in, we get the parameters again. Holding R will reset the view and show all the blocks. So this is a driver. You can see from this line that it's controlling the value of randomness. Now it's a constant, so there's no animation going on here, but let's change that by changing it to a random, a random randomness. Sure. If you go to edit mode and press on a block, not in between, you will swap the block for something else. Now what we're looking for is a source and we're looking for value. Value is just a simple number, which can be used, for instance, to drive parameters. And we're looking for random. Now you can see our randomness going all over the place. Let's exit edit mode again. If we zoom in onto the driven randomness, you can see that there's these arrows. These allow you to set the minimum and maximum of the driven value. 
Drivers are not limited to just one level. We can also drive the interval on the random in the driver. And we can set this to an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. So again, source value LFO. Change the period. And now by pressing escape, we can exit all the drivers. You're also able to copy and paste blocks as you see fit by hovering over a block and pressing Ctrl C. You can see the current contents of the clipboard right here. Placing it somewhere is done by pressing Ctrl V above one of the add zones. Now we're not seeing much because we're still using the multiply operator. So let's change it to add. And remove the red. But how do you remove? Go to edit mode again. Hover the red, hold the alt key as well and press the block. Now we're left only with the flashes. If you like the behavior you've created, you can save it by pressing here or pressing Ctrl S. Let's call it flashing and press Ctrl S again to save it. Now to clear the whole thing, we can remove a whole branch by clicking under a node while holding L. To load the behavior back, you can press load or Ctrl L. We choose our flashing again and voila, it's back. But still, we're not outputting to anything. So let's enable a plugin. If you go to settings or press F3, so let's enable Artnet to output to DMX and shapes to output some circles. You will get a new window with the output. Now let's add a new fixture that go to shapes and one that goes to Artnet. If we like this behavior, we can just apply it to all of the fixtures we have here by going here and pressing Ctrl A or apply to. Now you can see a little circle appear on the screen. We can increase the size by adding a radius attribute. Again, source, radius, constant. Can increase this. And now we can change this. And also add some random again. By moving the fixture around in the scene, you can change the position of the circle in the output. Press I to open inspector and P to change to position settings. By pressing S, you can snap to grid. Pressing O again, here it's not very important, but for the Artnet fixture, you can set the DMX channel. If you hold insert, you can see the DMX output. If we change the channel, you can see it's moved right here. Here you can assign new groups to the fixture by pressing add, writing the group name and pressing enter. This allows you to apply behaviors to only this fixture. You can now also save the layout you've created here by pressing save on the layout. This however saves only the layout, the setup of the fixtures in the scene. To save the content as well, press save on content and save that. Now you can have different scenes and load them back up. To quickly duplicate a fixture, you can select it and press Ctrl D. If you want to select more fixtures at once, hold B and drag over them. You can now duplicate 
all of them at once. Pressing P again, I can move around the whole group. Control right and left turns the view around. And pressing here gives you different perspectives on the scene. That's it for this quick start video. I hope it gets you going and I'll delve into some of the deeper concepts in later videos. Don't forget to join the chat, check the documentation and see you next time. Thank you.